Welcome to Cody's Friendship Unit. I'm Chris. I'm with Jeremy. What's up? And Brian. What's going on? Are games too cheap? Should they be more expensive? We discuss all this and more on this episode of Cody's Friendship Unit. If you like the video, please like us. And if you love us, please sub us. You'll be entered for a chance to win some Steam codes. All right. Here, here's my theory, right? I got two sides of the coin. Two sides of the coin. Both sides do it. Both sides do it. There's like the super high in AAA. There's a super low in like <laughs> indie. Here's my arguments for both real quick. 30 seconds. Real side for the AAAs. Basically, we're getting fucked with microtransactions. That's just how it is. Like there's a lot of them and they suck and they're ruining games. Also, games have been the same price for like the last forever, basically. Like since like the 90s. They really haven't changed if not have gotten actually cheaper since like the super expensive cartridges for some big games uh so maybe games should be like 90 bucks no loot boxes or something like that that's that's like argument one argument two the cheap side is indie devs they take on a lot of risks they mortgage their houses they do all this other stuff and it's great that we get to play their games but they sell them for like 10 bucks realistically like st something like Stardew ba Valley, you pick that up, you're gonna play that for like 30 hours. You you pick up something like Dead Cells, you're gonna play that for like 40 hours. You pick up Binding of Isaac, you're gonna play that forever, uh, literally till you die. So maybe 10 bucks is not asking enough. When, once because because you you have to give money to the distributor, the publisher, like the this is a lot of risk on yeah, on these small studios. And, and the last thing I'll just say is, you know, I've noticed we have, everybody has, like, we're in this, like, everybody has games. There's so many games. I feel like I would, I would rather put my money towards fewer games of higher caliber with less bullshit. Like, put, that, that's just me. That's where I'm at right now. So, that, that's it. I'm just putting that out there. Floor's open. Go nuts. I, I I don't get like so so start off like the the indie developer thing. I see that more as like you know what's the point of making like a fucking demo tape? Like your band sucks, you're you know et cetera et cetera. But you're I feel like with stuff like that, you're trying to get yourself noticed so that you can get more money to make a better game. Yeah, because there's yeah. the whole there's the whole investment thing on the on the back end that we don't see as like the consuming public. And if they're like, "Hey, I have this game that sold however many millions of copies, even though it was ten bucks," it's a success. Like, right? You can take that to your to your venture capitalists and you know trust fund kids or whatever, and Bruce. get get your money. You got to get that money, but. I, I don't think that for an indie development, like, and especially if it's like your first game or like your second game, and you you're you're doing okay, like you de there's definitely something there, but you're still not really making games that are a hundred percent. You know, with the, like the little mechanics things and and yeah. things it's like this is clearly like a good amateur, but it's still an amateur. Like people aren't gonna want to pay thirty bucks for that. You're you're willing to cut things a lot more slack at ten bucks than you are at thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. with games being 90 bucks like yeah sure if this was still the 90s and you were guaranteed to get like patches and updates then I understand that but like you buy the game and that's it these days you get what you get and pretty much the rest is either paid DLC or it turns into buy the next version of this game which has all the improvements that you want in it like I think that the AAA folks know what side their bread's buttered on with the microtransaction stuff. There's the reason. There's a reason that they're doing all that shit, and it's because it makes them a ton of money. So that kind of offsets the initial purchase price of the game, or it, of it being quote unquote too low. You know, and if you're selling literally millions and millions of copies of something at, at sixty bucks a pop, you're still doing all right. You know, you, you can afford to pay your people, you can afford to, you know, pay off pay your license fees and all that all that shit and and still come out okay. 
Like I would prefer that things stayed the way they are. And you know, I hate microtransactions. I think that's it's absolute bullshit. But you can still fundamentally ignore it. And if the game is so broken by microtransactions that it's unplayable, you're gonna know that if you do a little bit of research before going into it, then you're probably not gonna buy that game. So, so you know, I, find your I, happy balance. Can I just add, like, just, would you, th- and like, I, cause this is like an innocent example, which is kind of why I'm asking with this particular case. Would you personally have rather purchased Rocket League for like, I, I'm just gonna pretend it was 15 bucks. I don't know how much you actually got it for. Would you I rather- About 15 bucks. Yeah, would you rather have, bought rocket league in its current state for 15 bucks or bought rocket league for 30 bucks with in like every skin everything like you're gonna get everything like you don't have to go through the bullshit there's no loot boxes you just, like they're gonna develop at the same pace they're developing basically and you're just gonna get it like they might have an interesting way of getting it where you like level up and stuff but you are gonna you're gonna get it um i'm just curious I don't really care about shit like that. Like, I'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about content that actually, like, none of that fundamentally changes the game. It is, yeah. and the loot box stuff in its purest sense is not really supposed to. Yeah. But, like, I don't care about skins and aesthetics. And, like, I'm fine with the stuff that's in the game to begin with, and I'm happy paying 15 bucks for it. I would not probably want to pay 30, which is why I didn't buy it full price. Yeah. So, like, we've talked about this a little in the past, and, like, I don't understand, especially for AAA developers, like, where the concern comes from. Video games is, like, literally one of the most profitable industries in the world, so it's not like they're having trouble making ends meet. So I don't know why they would, like, I don't know what the argument is for raising prices. It's not like they are going out of business. Uh, and then secondly, it's not as if we, you know, if we paid ninety dollars for a game, it's not as if the the AAA companies would stop doing loot boxes. They're publicly traded companies. Yep. They have a legal obligation yep. to make every last dollar that they can. And if they can make another dollar by continuing to sell loot boxes and give you a ninety dollar game, like they're gonna do that. So their job is to find the you know the way that they can squeeze every last fucking penny out of you and they've settled on 60 bucks i that's i mean it's what you know it's what the market will bear right like 60 bucks well so see i would argue that it's not 60 bucks anymore i would argue i mean and i this is kind of a stretch i agree it isn't it isn't really 60 bucks because a lot of content is walled off yeah like like, like, bullshit fucking dlc i mean i get this is like (laughs) So, like, me being, like, the ultimate cuck that I am, because I don't do this very often, but, like, if it's something that I'm crazy about, yeah, being the cuck that I am, uh, they, you know, Zelda came out, and they are like, hey, there's this expansion, it's 20 bucks, my $60 game, $80 game, like, I've, of course I bought it. I mean, I waited for the shit to get reviewed, but I did buy it at the end. Smash Bros. DLC, 25 bucks. It's now an $85 game. Of course I bought it. Like, because I know, I mean, they're, they're characters. So, like, I know the, the game, it's going to be good. Like, they're going to be more Smash characters and more music and more stages, which is good for me. Um, So, yeah, of course I bought it. The game's already more. Would I have rather just paid $80 for Zelda? probably like I, it, I feel a little so there's like two sides of the coin there's like the one side that's like eighty dollars is a lot for a game i feel kind of stiffed and if you hide it with like oh this is a sixty dollar game plus twenty dollars like i guess that's a little easier to swallow but at the same time i feel kind of stiffed when i'm like what the fuck i have to pay twenty dollars to get like the full experience i don't know but you wouldn't feel stiffed if you had paid the twenty dollars if you had paid exactly the same amount of money up front that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's kind of like, I I, it, I would feel less preyed on. I guess I don't know how else to say it. Like, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I think it depends a lot on the game. Like in the case of like, I'll stick with The Witcher. You have a game where the core game is like 120 hours of gameplay, and then you have expansions that are like 40 hours. 
like I don't feel bad about paying an extra 10 bucks for another 40 hours of content, especially because it's not like that was all done and they decided like, you know what I mean? Like they, that I understand. That's basically another full game. So yeah, if you're going to charge me 10 bucks to basically have an entire additional experience, I understand. I think, you know, I haven't played the Zelda DLC, but you can you can speak for whether or not you think it was it's worth a... It. Yeah, I mean, and not just worth it is in the sense, was it fun or not, but was it, you know, did it justify an additional price tag? That's yeah. different, I would say, than like a game that has, you know, content walled off artificially behind a DLC paywall. That's horseshit. But what I'm saying, Chris, is that like, if you paid $80, then it would just be $80 for the beat, like... The regular game and then they would charge you another twenty dollars for dlc you know what i mean like that's how yeah companies work all right so let's go <clears> back <throat> to the, the small fries because you don't really talk about the small fries jeremy talk yeah about well I, I i mean i i just i think the the triple a's are like an open and shut case i think we should have video game socialism no profit take their billions game should be forty dollars boom yeah, but I would it. never buy another video if every single video game was forty dollars. No, 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 no. Like AAA a titles, video. my dude. AAA titles, launch price forty dollars, no profit. Video game international yeah, video game cooperatives. It'd be nice, but there's no incentive. It's like if they creativity, my dude. Workers would still get paid. There's just there's just no profit at the top. Anywho, I do have one more theory, one more pricing theory. Hold on. So, so in terms of indies, like again, like I think that I, I just don't think people would pay thirty bucks for it. Like, if people would pay thirty bucks, then they would charge thirty bucks now. You know what I mean? Like, so clearly, yep. I just don't think the interest is there. Ten bucks is about what people are willing to pay. I think there was some variation in the quality of the game, and sometimes you get a really great game for thirty bucks. But Isaac also isn't 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 ten bucks. Isaac is like a twenty. It's like twenty five dollars. It was originally cheap, like the original mm -hmm. Binding of Isaac was. Less, but then the but games yeah, that really you're... take off, like, generally raise in price. Yeah. Um, and the games that don't, don't. Um, so, you know, they that's that's the system we live in. You take on a lot of risk if you're a really, really small studio. Um, but I don't necessarily think that they should generally be, be more, you know, be higher than they are. Again, it's it's a pretty profitable industry. Not everyone wins out, but. All right, last, last theory for me, and I know this is like a bad word, but things are different now. Like, think games, games are like uh, an ecosystem. Some, you know, six months later, you might get that Witcher expansion. Three months later, you might get that Zelda upgrade. You're playing Rocket League skins and shit. They're gonna be added constantly. Subscription service for for maybe. Uh, mm, Maybe not one particular game, but maybe like on a publisher basis or like a uh, platform basis, like thirty dollars a month. No, Tw twenty dollars a month. All the Nintendo games you can you can play. Not worth it. Not worth it. Period. Not cost, worth it. Is that a cost of ownership? Oh hell yeah! Because like you look at it and you could have bought even if the games are thirty dollars a pop. Yeah. You could have bought. Like, would you say it was gonna be twenty bucks? But you could have bought eight games, and kept them, and had them as yours to play whenever you wanted, when you're not connected to the internet. I, I don't. The subscription model just doesn't work for me, and I really hope that's not what things turn into. And the idea would be like things would be free if if there was further development, and that would incentivize you to keep it. Let me just. So Brian, the Xbox One is $120 a year, so that's $10 a month. And you get every Xbox One exclusive and it's like 100 games between Xbox One and Xbox 360. I can't think of, well, that's the other problem is that like I don't want to really, like I don't really care to play any of that those. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very, I'm like, I'm like against the mainstream man of, of gaming. like. <laughs> like it, I don't know. I think that you're really buying, paying for something. It's like the it's like the argument. Like, why would you rent an apartment because you're paying for something that you're never gonna own? Why would you yeah. do subscription? Because eventually you're gonna be like, I don't well, really want to. I don't want to pay for the subscription anymore, and you're gonna stop paying for it. Then there's gonna be the day. Like, oh, gee, I'd really like to play such. Oh, wait. 
I don't have that subscription service anymore. And yeah. I mean, it's like Netflix, though. Like, or, or, you know, like, things come and things go, and you pay for it, and you enjoy what you have while you have it. I think, again, we've talked about subscription before, too, and I think it depends a lot on the individual. Like, if you're someone who plays a lot of games, particularly as they come out, I think that the subscription probably makes sense. If you're someone... Like when we were kids, you know, you didn't, you had like six games. You know, I have like seven or eight games on GameCube from when I was a kid. And I go back and play them and like, hey, you replay the games. That's what you had. Um, so it, I think it just kind of depends on how you approach games, how much you play, how, you know, how often you replay. Um, but again, like, I, I is like, if, it's not like if we did a subscription service, it would be a stagnant twenty bucks. It would have it would eventually be sixty bucks, and you wouldn't get to keep anything. And there would be microtransactions. And there would be microtransactions. And there would be a battle royale mode. Oh, dude, there would be there would be two like battle royale modes. You get to battle other other Only one subscription game holders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, I I'm I'm thinking about this right now. Uh, I'm I'm a lower game price activist. I'm standing up for the gamers. No, I mean, that's totally fair. Oh, I it's, it's just, so, I guess this is kind of where I, I guess I'll, I'll personally end it off. And I want your response, Jeremy, in particular, because you're you're for the gamers. Um, I'm for the people. And I'm the corporation. Chris, 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 is, Chris is for the AAA studios. I'm for yeah. the game. I want EA to make as much money as possible. No, Subscribe um, to Cohesive Friendship Unit if you're for the gamers. Every subscription, we donate $100 to EA. No, no, uh, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> so... This is just like a thought. I'm just thinking out loud here, but games uh, have gotten much more expensive to make. Uh, they, they, it's not unusual for a game to cost upwards of $500 million to create from, from start to finish. It's a lot of money. Games didn't used to cost that much in the 90s, and the medium that you sold them on cost a lot more too, like pre-CD CD ROMs. So. I don't, and, and teams were much smaller, so yeah, the cost of the game is, is much smaller, but you can distribute the wealth better because everything's smaller. So I don't understand how the prices maintain the same with the exception of microtransactions. And that might be the only answer. I mean, it's definitely not. They're definitely making way more money than they did in the 90s. If they weren't, they wouldn't still be making video games. They'd be making something else. Like, we don't live in video but game why? socialism yet Be why yeah. why what why or how, how? how are they made yeah how a people's incomes have fallen relative to inflation so people have less disposable income to play on games no, but at the how? same time there are more people buying games and more games being sold because we're all fucking depressed and games, games are really fun um so yeah there's more people buying them. people can't afford to pay a higher price that's what people are willing to pay they make a lot of money and they're like hey this is a good racket i'm gonna stay in video games and i'm gonna charge 60 bucks and i'm also gonna try and you know bend people over and get an extra you know an extra slice on top from the microtransactions if they could charge more they would be charging more now but they also it's not again if they weren't making money they would not continue to be in business so they're clearly profitable companies some of the most profitable in the entire world yeah, like if Microsoft's buying you, you're you're not worth nothing. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and it, like if they're not making it, this is gonna sound really blunt from from someone who is not in the computer industry. But maybe like if the games are too expensive to develop, maybe you should think about working more and less like sitting on bean bags and playing ping pong. That's what I'm telling you, dude. And, like no because if you think of like the I don't know how to pronounce it. archetypal, archetypal, a gate like the the stereotypical yeah. video archetypal, the the absolute stereotypical video game. Like there's people sitting on bean bags. There's people just like hanging out. Like there's some people doing genuine work, and I guess some of it is is in the the flow of you know putting out the end product. But it just seems like the that industry in general wastes a lot of money and a lot of productivity like if you got smart people working for you they should be working not sitting on a beanbag or, or playing smash well then you see the uh i mean the other side where red dead developers were like horrifically overworked apparently uh 
Right, but then you you look at that and that's clearly like that's clearly a game that stands out. Oh yeah. As something sure. that is is different than like th there was clearly actual effort and work that went into that versus like we got this fantastic engine and we're gonna put some new some new textures and, and assets and then it's gonna be a microtransaction palooza like and that's I I feel like that's a lot of what we've been seeing maybe not so much this past year but like 2016 2017 it was just like old shit with microtransactions there's no innovation from these these big companies that's like they're also big companies like they're gonna try and get the money on both ends like they're gonna charge you as much as they can and they're gonna pay as little for as much work as they can from their workers it's not like they couldn't like not make slaves out of their workers and just like not be shitheads but well, i don't i don't think that it's like a like i can see how a game like red dead would lead to people being overworked but I would not say that that's probably the norm throughout the industry, that most video game developers feel that they're critically overworked. But they could, it's not like they, they could have hired more people. Like, how, like we don't need to look up what the the salary of the executive, it's you know, than I make. rock star is. Like, <laughs> well, where would they find the money? How much have they already made in profit from the game? It's, they they do it because they're they're just trying to squeeze every fucking penny out. They need that penny, dude. We need that penny, too. If they could get them made in fucking Uganda by actual slaves or whatever. Or no, I guess uh, Libya. Jesus. There we go. We have, we yeah, have slavery in Libya a again. a lot of trouble, dude. Yeah, no, no, no. Game. They have slavery again in Libya. Like that. That's pretty game, cool. Game would still cost 60 bucks, though. All right. Yeah. No, be 70 bucks, dude. <laughs> I'm... Uh, I, I've exhausted my thoughts on this topic since we're talking about Libya. Uh, yeah, this got... Th this took a dark turn. Are y'all done? Yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Well, before before things get too out of control, let's wrap it up, Brian. Well, if if you yourself are a video game developer sitting upon your beanbag, perhaps at lunch break, and you find yourself inflamed and enraged at my earlier comments or anything about this video, you believe that you deserve stacks and stacks of cash. Uh, go ahead and leave your thoughts and ire down in the word box there. Uh, like Chris said at the beginning of the video, if you sub to this channel, you'll be automatically entered into a chance to win some cool shit, i.e. Steam codes for, for dank Steam games. So uh, go ahead and click on that sub button because you know you enjoyed this and you want to watch all the shit that we put out. Uh, and uh, smoke them if you got them, guys. That's all for me tonight. All right. Thanks, Brian. We'll catch you guys next time.